Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. On a beach in Queensland, Australia, we meet two lifeguard friends. Josh, who will soon marry Rory's sister, his best friend. He goes to the beach and meets his fiancée, Tina. Josh has a moment of affection with her, they talk about missing that place, as they are soon leaving for Singapore. Meanwhile, Rory is in the sea on his board watching adventurous swimmers, unaware of a shadow beneath him. Moments later, while resting, a man swimming nearby is quickly pulled underwater, leaving a trail of blood. The lifeguard observer notices movement in the water and alerts of a shark, so Josh quickly orders everyone out of the water and takes a jet ski to look for Rory, who might be in danger. Tina is terrified, knowing her brother is in the sea and not hearing the warnings. Josh tries to alert him from afar, but Rory doesn't hear. Suddenly, a large shark jumps out of the water and knocks him off. When Josh goes to rescue him, he tries to hold on to his friend, but the animal attacks and drags Rory to the depths of the sea, killing him. Time passes and a year later, we see Josh reflecting on life, watching news about possible shark attacks on beaches. This reminds him of his late friend Rory and his ex-fiance. He goes out for a walk near the beach and observes birds flying strangely away from the sea, scared of something. Meanwhile, two men seeing police nearby decide to go to another location, planning something against society. Josh has left his lifeguard job and now works in a market. Among the customers is a young girl named Jamie, who shoplifts some products but is being watched by security. In the parking lot, a couple has a romantic moment, oblivious to their dogs barking. Jamie runs to avoid getting caught and meets her boyfriend Ryan, who also works there. Unfortunately, they are caught. Ryan tries to apologize, but he is fired. In the stockroom, Josh talks to his colleague Naomi when he hears a familiar voice. It's Tina shopping with her current boyfriend Stephen. But Josh's boss soon arrives and orders him to clean the bathrooms. Meanwhile, two men in the car, one named Doyle, plan to help a criminal rob the market to clear a debt his brother has with the wrong crowd. Jamie's father, Todd, is a police officer who comes to pick her up and tries to give her a moral lesson, but she doesn't listen. In the parking lot, he sees a man entering the market and notices he's armed. He takes his gun and follows the man. The robber goes to the manager's booth and demands all the money, but the manager says it's not in the safe and shows it, but Doyle still demands the money. Todd sees them and manages to ambush the robber, but the other criminal threatens another person if the police officer interferes. In the parking lot, Jamie talks to Ryan, who is sad about losing his job because of her. Feeling guilty, Jamie tries to get his job back. Back to Josh, when he is about to wash his face, the tap water starts to fail strangely. He hears gunshots from inside the market and realizes that the criminal has killed someone and now has Tina at gunpoint. Suddenly, everything starts to tremble, scaring everyone. Back at the city's beach, the seawater recedes, and a huge tsunami emerges, sweeping everything in its path, causing many deaths. The market is also engulfed by the waters, causing great damage, catching many by surprise, like Ryan who was in his car, and the couple of lovers. A while later, when the waters calm down, we see the destruction caused, and the entire market is flooded, with many dead along the way. Josh is alive, along with Doyle and a few others. He helps the wounded police officer Todd, who has an iron rod through his leg. He asks one of the survivors to look for supplies to help the injured. Jamie is also alive and reunites with her father. She discovers that the parking lot is also submerged, and probably Ryan is dead, which shocks her. Josh looks for Tina and finds her, she is paralyzed, but Josh goes to her and reassures her. Suddenly, one of the bodies is sucked underwater, but Tina cannot make sense of what's happening around her. The criminal assailant is not so lucky and dies. Stephen looks for medical supplies and finds another survivor. In the parking lot, the water didn't enter the couple's car, but they are trapped there. Suddenly, they hear noise as if something hit the car's body. When they look around, they discover it's another dead body. Ryan is also lucky, trapped in his car. However, he doesn't want to stay there, so he breaks the glass, letting water into the vehicle, but taking a breath, he gets out of the car and emerges from the water, which is at a low level underneath. He looks for other survivors, but no one responds. Suddenly, something passes near his leg and startles him. Back upstairs, Josh takes care of Todd's wound, while one of them says the water level is rising, 
deducing that part of the city is submerged. Josh says he will stay and help the police officer, as he cannot swim in that condition, and asks others to look for a way out. Tina and Stephen check the main entrance, while Doyle offers to check the goods entrance and exit, but the police officer doesn't allow it, sending the security guard Bob instead. In the flooded parking lot, the couple is still waiting for help, while their dog barks, sensing something outside. Ryan climbs on a pile of cars and notices something moving under the water. Back with the others, Josh realizes there's something in the water and, fearing it's dangerous, tells everyone to get out of the water. Tina and Steven manage to reach higher ground, but Bob is pulled under. Panic ensues as no one knows what happened. When Bob reappears, he asks for help, and Jamie grabs his arm, but unfortunately, something shredded him underwater, leaving him dismembered. The scene horrifies everyone, but worse is yet to come when they get a glimpse of the danger surrounding them, a seven-meter-long shark. Ryan searches for an exit but only finds more lifeless bodies. The couple in the parking lot argues, as the gift the man gave her was fake. He asks for her shoes to break the windshield, but she opens the sunroof and emerges, communicating with Ryan nearby. Suddenly, they see a huge shark swimming close by, easily cracking the car window. The upstairs group decides what to do in their situation, but there's not much that can be done, and the bigger problem is lurking around them. To make matters worse, an electrified cable breaks and is about to touch the water, which poses an imminent risk of death. Josh says the power shutoff panel is in the warehouse, and he will turn off the power. Tina disapproves, but Stephen has another plan. He decides to dress in some iron grates from shopping carts as armor. The group holds the hose supplying air to him while Stephen heads to the power panel. The shark finds him but fortunately doesn't attack. Stephen continues, and as he approaches the location, he discovers that he has run out of hose length, and Josh holds it to prevent it from falling into the water. Realizing this, Stephen decides to let go of his breathing apparatus on his own, thus reaching the electrical switch. He manages to turn it off, to everyone's relief, but now he needs to return. Unfortunately, the weight of the iron bars causes him to stay submerged, and he is unable to resurface to breathe, marking the end of the brave Stephen. Tina is saddened by the loss of her boyfriend. Later, Jamie tries to cheer up Tina, but she's in mourning and without hope. Doyle talks to Naomi, and they make an improvised spear using a broom handle and a knife. Josh spots an air vent on the ceiling that might be an escape route. Meanwhile, Ryan uses a dead man's hand to attract the creature lurking by the couple's car. Ryan manages to lure the beast, and the couple moves to another car, narrowly escaping the shark's attack and even leaving their poor dog in the water. With that they are safe for now. The upstairs group begins a plan to reach the air duct. Once they manage to get there, someone needs to continue with the plan. The manager volunteers. He's hoisted with a rope and reaches the duct, but upon seeing hundreds of spiders, he loses his balance and almost falls into the water. Suddenly, the shark leaps out and grabs his body. The beast bites him in half, ending his life. Another person falls into the water but is rescued before the shark can feed again. The group is terrified by the ferocity of the marine animal and momentarily observes the waters around them. In the parking lot, the couple argues because the man threw the defenseless dog to its death, angering the animal lover. Meanwhile, Ryan insists on finding an exit. He sees a pipe on the ceiling and decides to use it to get to the other side but drops his flashlight in the water. Unafraid of the danger, he jumps in and retrieves it. Ryan starts crossing, holding onto the pipes, while the great shark lurks below, waiting for a slip from its prey. Unfortunately, it happens, and Ryan falls into the water. Luckily, the couple is quick to help him onto the car, but the poor man falls into the shark's environment and is immediately attacked, shredded, and killed. Back with the upstairs group, they feel helpless, fearing their fates are sealed, and they will all die. However, Doyle stands up, determined to hunt and kill the beast, but you need a hook that's nearby. Todd offers to help, but seeing this, his daughter jumps into the water and retrieves what they need. The shark starts chasing her, but Jamie is quick and manages to get behind the counter. She hits the animal trying to attack her, scaring it away for now. She grabs the hook and a piece of meat, and is then pulled to where the group is, narrowly escaping the shark. As Josh prepares the trap, 
Tina notices he still wears her brother's necklace. In a moment of sad memories, Josh recounts that on the day of his friend Rory's death, he was supposed to be in Rory's place monitoring. Blaming himself for a long time, Josh apologizes for distancing himself from her. Tina says it's okay, what matters now is that they are together. Doyle initiates the plan and throws the bait to the animal, but the shark shows no interest in the meat. One of them, named Kirby, suggests that the beast might be after human flesh again. Suddenly, he draws a gun and threatens Naomi. Revealing his acquaintance with Doyle, everyone realizes the criminal is still alive, and the masked dead was just another person he dressed to deceive them. Wanting to use Naomi as bait, he drops her in the water to be attacked but, getting careless, is wounded by Doyle with the makeshift spear. They rescue Naomi, but don't let Kirby get away with what he did. Doyle grabs him, impales the hook into him, and throws him into the water. Soon, the criminal is torn apart by the shark. The plan seems to work, the hook lodged in the beast's mouth leaves it stuck, giving the group a chance to escape. Back in the parking lot, the little dog reappears on a plastic sheet, jumps into the water, and returns to its owner, making her very happy. Ryan has a plan and starts banging on the air pipe, the sound reaching the group upstairs. Jamie hears the noise, realizes there are more survivors in the parking lot, and suspects it might be Ryan. She goes to look for him, and Todd asks Josh to take care of her. Before leaving, Tina calls Josh and gives him a kiss, showing she still has feelings for him, and Josh reciprocates by giving her his friend's necklace. Josh follows Jamie and assesses whether they can reach where Ryan is. They lock the door to prevent the water level from rising inside the market. The two then swim and dive into the parking lot. When seen, they are warned about the shark inside. They quickly swim and climb onto a car. Fortunately, it's police officer Todd's car, and his daughter Jamie says there's a gun in the trunk. Josh manages to get the gun and reloads it. He jumps into the water and waits for the shark to approach. Before the beast attacks, Josh shoots and kills it, eliminating the danger that terrified them. In the market, the group heads to the exit, still blocked. Doyle has a plan and tells everyone to quickly get out of the water. The parking lot group reaches the others. Doyle instructs everyone to leave the water quickly, as he will use electricity to blow up the car blocking the passage. Another earthquake shakes everything, and what held the beast breaks free. Josh realizes this and tells everyone to get out of the water, as the shark is loose. The platform he is on begins to fall into the water, so he supports himself on the pipe and, using a taser gun, shoots and electrifies the shark. Being in the water, the electric charge increases, killing the beast. Doyle turns on the power and blows up the car blocking their way. Fortunately, everyone manages to get out of the market and witnesses the city's destruction caused by the tsunami. The story ends here, watching helicopters rescuing all the survivors of this terrible catastrophe.